Welcome back everybody. It is so great to see you all again. I have something really cool to show you. This is a picture of my high school sweetheart, who is my wife and the mother of our nine children. I photographed this of her in high school. I believe it was around 11th grade. Um, and by that point, I had already done photo one and photo two. So I'd gone through the black and white course and the color course and was basically given freedom to go into the dark room and do what I wanted to do. So this image I shot for her senior photo and um, yeah, processed it, printed it. And by that point I was getting really, really good at printing my own black and white images. Fast forward to um, 2000, 2001 when digital started becoming mainstream, I picked up a Fuji S1 Pro and began learning how to process those files as black and white within a digital workflow. Um, so today we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about how we can take our digital files and process them. I will be using Capture 120 uh, for this tutorial. And so if you don't have a copy, there is a link in the description below. Feel free, download that link. If you really enjoy using Capture 120 and you purchase it, that will help support my channel. And for that, I thank you. Um, but for now, why don't we jump into the edit? So here's an image of a parking structure that I photographed in downtown St. Paul. I did this handheld with my Fujifilm X100S. And I shot this in RAW because I knew that I wanted to create a more dynamic black and white than what the internal black and white uh, settings would give me within that camera. Now, Capture One Pro has a few really awesome ways to create a black and white. Now, a lot of people will just simply desaturate the image all the way down. So I don't recommend to do that. So what I recommend is you click on the color wheel, scroll down to the black and white tool palette, then check enable black and white. Now, what this is going to do is allow you to adjust every single color channel within that image. And the one thing I want everyone to notice here is you'll notice that it looks like a adjustment sliders for saturation. And that's exactly what these are. So the more saturation you give it, the brighter the tones will become. The less saturation you give it, the darker. And as you can see, as I increase the saturation, the red tones get brighter, or if I decrease the saturations, they get darker. The beauty of this is that as I increase or decrease each level, each channel, I can then basically adjust the curve to where I can either get more or less contrast. I can reduce highlights or increase highlights, shadows, etc. So I'm going to start processing this image the way that I would like it to look. Now, the one thing is the sky has a lot of blue and cyans in there. So that's the first thing I'm going to touch. I'm going to take my cyans and I'm going to drag them down because I want to darken the sky. I really like a nice dark sky in a black and white image. Pull those blues down and you can see just how dramatic that already is. Now inside the parking structure, the concrete, concrete has a lot of reds, has a lot of yellows and some greens to them. So I'm going to play with those three sliders next. I'm going to slightly increase the reds. I'm going to decrease my yellows ever so slightly here. And the same thing with the greens. So here, if I hit Alt or Option and this reset up here, I can preview the before and the after. So already we're looking really, really good. Next, I'm going to go up to my exposure tab here and then I want to increase the contrast. I'm going to put this right at 15. I'm going to reduce my highlights ever so slightly. There we go. And I want to increase my brightness to about seven. That's looking pretty good. And then here in the levels, I'm going to increase my black and pull in my brightness, my whites, just so I get more contrast. That's looking great. Okay, so as you can see here, we've got you know more sunlight, more brightness over here than we do over here. So what I would like to do is create a gradient here and just adjust these tones to even them out with this tone over here. To do that, I just hit the plus sign over in my layers. I'm gonna double click that and call sky right. Click on my gradient tool, drag in my gradient. And let me just move this guy down just a tiny bit. I'm going to adjust my exposure down ever so slightly. There we go. Now the cool thing about this is I can go into my color editor, click on the advanced tab. If I 
grab this eyedropper and I just click on the blues here. Now I can do the same thing in here that I could in my other tool. So I'm going to bring those blues, I'm going to bring those blues down just a little bit. Now I've got a little bit more even tone in my sky. So the process of creating interesting black and white photos is pretty simple. It's just a matter of balancing your highlights, your midtones, and your shadows as you would with a color photograph, but you're looking at monochromatic tones. And so you want certain things to pop out, certain things to disappear, and you're trying to create a level of balance and contrast in the image. Some images need to be contrastier, some need to be a little more subdued. It all depends on the mood and the message that you're trying to convey within your image. Um, so let me jump into a few more images and show you my process on those. Um, some of these are portraits, some are landscapes, and some are uh, more architectural type photos. Here's an image straight out of camera. It's of a portrait that I did for a creative company within Minneapolis. And this is shot with my GFX 50S um, on Fujifilm Classic Chrome. So I had a completely controlled lighting scenario. Uh, the white balance and everything was already dialed in, so there was no need for me to really change anything within this image. Now, when I photographed the image originally, it was intended to be done in black and white, and this is how I captured it, and this is how Capture One read the file. This image is pretty much ready to go. There's nothing needed. So here's an architectural image that would normally be done in color uh, for the client, but uh, for this video, I will show you how I would process this one in black and white. I'm going to click on enable black and white and now this is where we get to have fun because we have some red tones that are going to be in these little pine cone type things or these seed pods and then we have the green tones of the plants and there's the yellow tones within the grass and stuff so as i play with this you're going to see everything kind of changing ever so slightly so i want to bring those highlights up a little bit i'm going to bring my yellow's down to right about here. Now the big thing is, again, skies are blue, so I'm going to pull down some of that. Just like that. Bring up the greens ever so slightly. I'm going to bring the yellows back up a little bit because I want a little more contrast. Okay, and then now I'm going to start playing with my contrast. So this one, I'm probably going to start at 20. Yep, I like that. And I'm going to bring up my shadows by 10. That's looking pretty good. And then I also want to go down to my clarity here. And I'm going to go with, go right to like 40. Yeah, that's looking really good. Now, the other thing we can do here is we can check our exposure warning to see if we're blowing out any highlights or shadows. And we're currently blowing out these highlights. So I'm going to go back up here to my highlight slider, the high dynamic range tool, and I'm going to start pulling down these highlights. There we go. And the stuff that's back here, I'm not too worried about. It's not going to print anytime soon. So there we have it. That's a quick black and white conversion. It's an image of my daughter that I did when I was testing out some lighting. Uh, this was shot with a Nikon D800. And the reason why I'm showing you images with so many different cameras is that it doesn't matter what you're shooting with. Whether you're shooting RAW or JPEG, doesn't matter the camera this conversion process will work with any image as long as you don't push it too far. So in this image, I want to make this really, really catchy. Um, she's got some beautiful eyes here that I want to accentuate. And I'm going to show you again how working within your channels helps to make things pop. So I'm going to go down, click on enable black and white already. Wow, that looks really good. Uh, I'm going to play with the reds first. I'm going to pull these down, give her skin a little bit of a relaxation there. There we go. Pull the yellows down. Now her eyes have some blue in them and cyan. So if you notice, I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me zoom in. Watch what happens when I bring the cyan slider all the way up to brighten up those eyes. Did you see it? I'm going to pull them down. Look at how much her eyes pop now. I'm going to bring the blues up to do the same. And we're going to pull the greens down ever so slightly. Now your eyes are drawn directly to hers, but this image, like all, will still need a little bit more tweaking. So we go into our regular adjustments tools and I'm going to start playing with 
that here. I'm going to bring up my brightness just ever so slightly in my levels. And pull down my highlights ever so slightly. You know what? Now I want her skin a little brighter. I'm going to reset my red and I'll actually pull it up a little bit. Yeah, that looks much better. And then we're going to add some contrast. I'm going to check my exposure warnings. All of this, these are all crushed blacks. So I'm going to have to pull my black slider up just a little bit because I don't want to crush them too far. There. That looks much, much better. And then I think this deserves a one-to-one -one crop. Okay, so on the next couple of images, I'm just gonna show you what I did to make them look the way that they look. Okay, so here's an image of the Stillwater Lift Bridge in Stillwater, Minnesota. Uh, this was, I think back in 2014, there had been a lot of rain and the, the river was swelling. Uh, I'm actually on the boardwalk the boardwalk was flooded, but I put my camera down. It was a D300 as low as possible so that I could get a nice uh, view of the water because I really wanted to show the swell of the water and how choppy it was. Um, so for this particular photo, what I did was I enabled black and white. You can see here how I adjusted my reds, yellows, greens, cyans, blues on down. And then I went into my, uh, my standard adjustments here I increased my exposure a little bit. Of course, I increased the contrast. I pulled down the highlights and you can see I adjusted the levels. I increased the blacks by five. I decreased the highlights by 10 and so on. I also increased my clarity to 35. Structure to 15, that helps get everything. Gets all this detail to pop throughout the image. I added a vignette, negative, you know, 1.13. And um, then from there, I added these filters. So I did a gradient filter on the water. And you can see here, it's just a gradient mask that I then adjusted with the levels tool. And then I added a brush to the trees area. And from there, I just increased the contrast, the brightness. I lifted the shadows a little bit pull down the blacks on the levels just to give those trees some pop, some definition. So what if you have an image that's a little bit more subdued, um, doesn't have the high contrast look to it? Can you make a good black and white out of it? Uh, and I have a really good example of that. In this image, the intent was to shoot it uh, for the process of becoming a black and white. In fact, I printed this one on uh, metal and it looks like a tin type. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, the process that I do for one of these, because you still want to create, you still want to get some of that contrast back that gets lost in an image that's so foggy or so hazy. Um, I'm going to just go into the black and white settings on this one because there's not much for color tone to really play with here. It's pretty much in the blues. And so if I increase the cyan, you can see the brightness going up. There we go. Because that's what I want to do is I want to create kind of a halo effect in the center, drawing my eye up to the lift bridge itself. Now, this area down here is really muddy, really gross, but I want the eye to know that there's some separation here because this all looks like it's kind of behind a hazy glass. So I'm going to add an adjustment layer. I'm going to call this water grad. And I'm going to create a graduated filter, graduated mask over this section right here. So I'm going to pump up the contrast here. I'm going to increase the black levels to about seven and then pull in the brightness. There we go. Increase the clarity. That's looking pretty good. I might actually call this one punch. There we go. That's a little bit better. I'm going to pull in a vignette, just a slight vignette. Nice. Increase my exposure a little bit more on this guy. And then I think I'm just going to really pump up the contrast even more. There we go. Yeah, I like this. I love how the eye now feels like I'm close and this is gradually 
getting hazier and hazier as we get to this section right here. Now, the trick is I don't want all of this in fog. I don't mind this guy being in fog because my focus is on the bridge. So I'm going to take and create another layer. This I'm going to use a brush on. I'm going to call this bridge. I'm going to hit M for mask so I can see where I'm painting. And I'm just going to paint in on this bridge a little bit because I just want him to pop out a little bit more. Okay, M to turn off the mask. From here, I'm going to basically increase my black levels and pull in my highlights just a little bit more. And then my clarity, pull that clarity in. There we go. Now you can see here it is before and here it is after. Now the bridge feels more like it's coming towards me. So what about for a landscape photo? Uh, I have a landscape here uh, that I did actually it was just from the side of the road. I was on a trip in Colorado for a client and I had to pull over and get this shot because I loved the way that the clouds were rolling in over this mountain range. Now, there are two ways because this was done with my X100F. There's two ways to process this though. I can either choose the Acros filter. And as you can see this changing the look of the image. Now, when I had originally processed it, I did it with the Acros with the red filter. What I'm going to do is leave this in Provia and I'm going to go and do my enable black and white. And I'm going to pull down these red tones. I'm going to pull down the blue. I love a dark sky. Look at that sky. And that is a nice, nice sky. Pull up my yellows a little bit. Uh, let me bring them back down. Nope. We're going to go up, 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 up. I want some brightness up front. Now I'm going to create a graduated filter for the grass. We're going to call this grass. Zoop, graduate that puppy up there. Go here, we're gonna pull down the exposure ever so slightly. We're gonna increase the contrast though. See, see how beautiful that is? That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna keep doing this. I'm gonna bring in the blacks ever so slightly. We're gonna bring up the highlights a little bit. Nicely done. Now, what about the mountain range? I think the mountain range deserves a brush mountain brush. I'm going to click M so I can see what I'm doing with my mask. My mask of amazing powers in Capture One. Okay, now that I have that set, I'm just going to pump up the contrast. Oh yeah. Now I'm going to go back to my background layer. I'm going to boost the exposure just a little because I want a little more contrast. Just a little more overall. Pow! Oh my goodness. Do I love that photograph. That one is getting printed. Okay, so I have to stop there because I could spend all day playing with my mountain images and making them look like Ansel. Uh, but anyway, what if you have a JPEG of a portrait that you did and you overexposed it a little too much? Can you rescue it as a black and white? <laughs> Absolutely. Let me show you what I did. Here is a photo of my good friend Jake while we were out photographing in Minneapolis one day. This is with the Fuji X100S, I believe. Um, this is shot at F2. Now, if you know anything about the Fuji X100 series, besides the V, the F2 was very soft and nobody liked it, but actually I liked it a lot. Um, Here's a good portrait of him, but it needs to be black and white. It needs to be a better looking portrait. So how are we going to fix a JPEG in Capture One? Well, same process as always. We go into the channel mixer, click enable black and white, and now we start playing with our sliders. Now he has a lot of red tones in his face and in his hair. So if we bring those up, ooh, looking like an alien, not a good idea. So we're going to pull this down, get some definition around his face. Same thing with the yellows. We're going to pull those in just ever so slightly. 
I'm going to go over here to my exposure slider and I am going to pull my exposure down. Ooh, not too much. Settle down. And I'm going to pull in my highlights just a smidgy. There we go. And then I'm going to start bringing in the black right there. Going back to the black and white sliders. Let's adjust. Now there's going to be some blue tones right in here because he's in shade. So I pull that in. You can see how that darkens. It's darkened real nice. And the greens, not much happening. You see that? There's barely anything happening in the greens. So we're just gonna leave them, leave them greens alone. Okay. Now this is looking okay. It isn't great. This still needs a lot of help. So how do we help it? Well, clarity is gonna do a lot for us. We're gonna pump clarity up to 60. Come on, 60, there you are. Okay, now I'm saying that looks pretty good. I'm gonna pull in a little vignette. I like a vignette. I'm kind of old school like that. And I'm going to reduce or pull in the blacks over here and I'm gonna bring up the highlights now. See, now we're really starting to look, look like something's happening. So let's look at our original. It's looking pretty good. What do we need? Contrast, oh yeah more bring it more there we go right there there it is that's all it takes just a little bit of work in the channels and you got yourself a beautiful black and white now it isn't as hard as you thought it's actually quite easy especially with something like capture 120. if you don't have capture 120 i highly suggest getting it there's a link in the description below purchasing it will help support my channel and for that i am super grateful as is my beautiful wife. But so go and play. Play in this sandbox of Capture 120. Take your raw images, take your JPEG images, put them in there, tweak those sliders, mess with it, play with it. You'll be happy you did. So until next time, thank you for watching. God bless.